so much. <clears throat> Bambi. I self-identify as a Bambi. Would like to meet Hunter with own gun cabinet, good sense of humour and matricide urges. We are not Freudians of the forest in our short-tailed knee-length pelts. I eat Bambi with my human teeth, polar bear, hunter, lost in anthropomorphized matricides with urges. We are not people of the forest in our short-termed waist-height skins. In the peak of a tale, so much should be exposed. Not even the muddied undercarriage, but some kind of anatomy that's smashable. Look how Bambi does ice bending. Those legs like that as if in innocence. Bambi knows what Bambi does is complicit. Slips on the floor, arse high like snobbery. The orifice is a Disneyan nightmare that we felt tip out at great personal cost. In the peak of a tail, so much nose up, back arch, not even exposed undercarriage, but some kind of natural mud that leaks when it's needed to ease the kind heart of anatomy that's smashable. Look how the deer does the bending. Those legs opened as if in innocence, as though a natural presentation, as though organisms multiply, Bambi knows what she needs, complicit orifice is a Darwinian vision, where there is no cost, when the brainstem is severed. The slurry of a massacre becomes a children's film. It is to be all light and air, with some didacticism and a character. It's an arc that's always unfinished and biblical. To see the marks that being young have left, fragile and animated, with no jaw other than for mournful vegetables and spring greens. The white, brash pattern of a drip-dyed deer who lived in Dalston, with a severe fringe and an unusual way of walking, where the concrete does not move me away from trees, but is a tiptoed catwalk of forward androgyny. In the pleasure of a massacre that must be accepted before halted, we become a Chinese film, all light and air character, a teen arc that is always unfinished with the rites of passage that involves breeding marks, that being no longer so young of left, that they are left fragile and inanimate afterwards, pleases and does not plague a bear's conscience, has not mine as a jaw hides the betrayal, but the other than deer mouth contains canines, mournful vegetables and life-giving meat, the blue vein pattern of a deer who lived alone and whom visited walks bow-legged in the aftermath. The concrete does not move me, requests for short haircuts to differentiate between visits and to ensure food androgyny. Noisemaker, an incessant talker to cover inarticulacy, communicate in tupping without a partner while always on the lookout for a beast. Will work for food. Small but agreeable Christian, incessant talker to convince of protection, safety, acceptance, then attraction. Long enough to allow us hunts, visits, communication, in tapping, hiding without. This is the rule of the silent patriarch that things and us will be overseen because every wood, however dense, has its cliff top surveillance these days. Scrutiny is a furred and feathered thing, a bird's eye view of mapping technology where Google has my foraging patterns saved. This is the wall of the silent dialogue that one side speaks and the other does, and that sings between them the act of killing animals as a way of keeping it from women, who also eat the deer, dried for travel, who worry as a profession, who afford feminine structures as a discussion of the masculine, while feathered thing, a bird's breast, is having its back broken and grilled. someone else to talk to me through my leg bones to better understand my foal-like nature. Half fawn and half brawn, I am the muscle parts of scarcity. What world is it when calves are a source of entertainment? I personify my food, I personify my thighs, I personify my Netflix browsing history and find myself in family friendly where there are always kings and stags. I get someone else to care for the weak, through her leg bones to better understand my bear-like nature. Half endless desire to kill the living, half I have a difficult time remembering. I am my best effort in a time of plenty. What world is it when urge is a source of shame? An old one. I personify my love, I personify my teeth, I personify my list of conquests. 
and find myself in female, animal-friendly farms where there are always doe and tag. Walt Disney, you should not have written that sex scene, for Bambi was too young and so fresh. When it is the orgy of worker ants beneath the feet that deserves so much erotic attention. Where the male does not just pity more, but proper mort after copulation, as we all know from the movie Ants, and more obscurely Bugs Life. <laughs> Walt Disney, you should not have revealed that written destiny of a thousand year crown for Bambi who was biologically ready but legally young and so fresh. When it is the orgy of workers in suits in heat beneath the calves that deserve so much erotic attention. Where the female does not just choke but learn to hold the car and toyed and jugular between thumb and forefinger, a risk of death, closed off with a slap. Ants hating babies, willing to die to sting them. The lack of penetrable holes goes on to become a problem. For us, even when I lift up my tail, sometimes I wonder whether I have innards at all, and when a creature is shot, it bleeds a neat line of red crayon across a pathetic fallacy. The lack of penetrable holes reveals a lack of penchant for conservation, traditional thinking for necessity is the mother of invention. For me, even when they lift up their tails, sometimes I wonder whether I have the concept of past, future, empathetic fallacy, and am free and grateful for what is presented to me. I put you bloodied and dead on Instagram, hashtag no filter, hashtag family times, hashtag blessed, committed to memory or an asylum. I keep you hidden and living in memory, worse for fear of professional offence or self-appointed judgement, and dead in the moment you'll come to life under blows, committed to memory of all patterns of human being, hashtag before, hashtag back then, hashtag canines. The Little Mermaid. The lasagna that never stops giving. The infinite pan. Pales does the fish on the crust of the sea pie, feathers the crumb topped edges of the dish. West Indian chef options to dignity. The labyrinthian fish pie that keeps on giving and bull headed but boy bodied eat crustaceous head, legs, and tail curl meeting mouth in a ribbon tongue pink and white. Where eyes are delicacies, the recipe for success is watching and waiting. Never official otherwise, a thinker into jail drunk. For earth is all available, down on a view of the sea, a wound split seam, an old song of eternal payments. The experience of the teenage mermaid, aggressive inability to empathise with the aggressor. Aspire upwards and out to beyond the surface which breaks around a head or a hand in the shallows, where depth can be measured with a temperature testing toe, baptism or accidental drowning, and the community's responsive tragedy. Oppressors always expect the oppressed to extend to them the understanding so lacking in themselves. So the princess steps all over the anglo caribbean crowd. The whole narrative is that a young girl disobeys her father, sells her soul and her voice to the embodiment of evil, and goes from being a mermaid to a human being. On that journey, the top half makes it worth it. Outside of bodies and souls and voices is just the page, the waves and the hours, where the finitude of the curse can be a blessing in human form. Her waist looks smaller when her tail is wrapped around tight in green, drowning a fish in air, the young that cannot be reduced, rush for a bucket. The king and his trident, the US submarines and their long-range ballistic missiles, Boys and their toys with gadgets and gizmos are plenty. The sceptical sea community becomes angered by the angry Ursula, is a marginal but powerful judgment, evil classic. Fish beneath the tail, beneath the waist. She too traded in her tail to dance better, no longer leaving puddles in Saturday night fever, her wetness misplaced in popular culture's newest disco dance. Under the sea, Ariel forgets the words of the world, while here to open the mouths of clams, the key ingredient is heat. The motivation for her complete change is her love for a man, which is true of some mermaids, a makeover can change your life. 
A believer in equality for centaurs, mermaids with human beings, people for the future friends of the water where other liquids disperse. To be half beast, half person are just the conditions for dreaming, having an aspirational top and bottom relationship where the mismatch is identity crisis manifest, moving better in water. Fantasia. Incomprehensible tale, the one that is, and as though from the middle of time, like confidence and the community of cheer that rips apart the sofa in its centre. The ground is like its soil once more, ready to be ploughed. Exclaim, say the servants of the earth, the mouse is magic. When the dinosaurs get it, it is the mouse that survives. With this mattress interior, the synthetically fleshed make off with our insides and any hope of cushions. A stabbed rat, a broken bucket, a melted substance that was once in motion, a wand made of finger bone, a wizard sleeve, an agent for the young to advise them how to live and what not to share. The orchestra of shadows without mouse ears, as brooms divide and multiply, the earth is born in mass-produced likenesses where cleanliness is a moustache swabbing replica. Learning magic in sterile pursuit, with bucket and mop and living ankle deep in barely bleached waters. Hung men, women buried alive, mice. Endless access to photography and the materials it produces. Slideshows as magic evenings spent on the precipice of love. The best one can hope for, that the mouse is responsible and the truth of fading isn't true. Spite holds together the arch of the household that abounds with the perfect half circle of mouse holes. Teeth into yolk, wand into air, Locusts, then woods, then a mute, realising the mouse has a motive. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. In the second person, gargoyles can point and laugh, better double to the point of almost self-amazing. And the faces they fill are only the taste of themselves, the fixed view of your lifetime where being mortal for once is a relief. Of all underrated cartoons, of all synthesised concepts, of all mice and bikers, of all ecology and flight, of all turtle and ninja, the labat of the gargoyle biting the dicks off of baby goats is the pièce of resistance. Outside in Paris the bells ring, and modernists gather around your brutal, brutal newness of form, where an eyebrow ridge and the erogenous zone pelvic and protruding become a twisted allegory for lazy allegory. Down there, or the downed, is Joris Karl Kusmans committing to the idea of a tea, that every joke ever told by a man had an end, to make more gargoyles. And if the child should have a bent back, then they'll never open the bricked-up system in this lifetime. Buried alive in conversation, stay out of the attic. There's something up there. All it takes is one swing, even if you're not punching, to lose grip on something real like the cloisters and the balustrades or the scrap metal drain pipes ripped off and sold on. I will happily teach you to swing, perhaps on stage to a paying public, deafened by bells once again as though attacks don't happen. The Parisian orangutan covers herself with a white sheet and the crowds clap. Even Toby, even Paul, even Prudence couldn't dream up that mangled region that throbs during the ringing and aches during the dusking. Even they couldn't know the need, even a hunchback needs, unless he turns to rats and children. These moments aren't to be watched. For us all, there are moments meant as unwatchable. In the Sorbonne, a man acts his own plague, and you are your own pestilence and mortification, hanging out in church corners and darkness like a narrative of paedophiles and or social pariahs. You do not need to be one or the other to be considered both by your neighbours. There is a case to be made for hating the hunchback. There are cases of neighbours informing on their neighbours. There is a literature of jealousy, litany city and height, of views and their price of peril of fools of accidents people got away with. 
There are those so ugly as to become what they look like and fewer still who beautiful are who they appear. You live in a cobbled ice cream world where you're so fucking ugly even the jippos won't fuck you though they are crossing our borders and those swarms in Calais aren't even dancing though Esmeralda still moves with her own bells around her ankles. Enough for the French militia to pick up and keep. Easier and more convenient than a mail order bride. A core of ankles that remain clean because it is a core. You are in the circle above the ankles. You are in danger here. Mercy without evidence, Doberman as a symbol of a camp being cleared, planes being taxied, hunchbacks being straightened, best in the long run, for it is a short suit to assume the longer dock is done, that Purdy didn't wish to, she did, and now he's good posture. Punch was your aberrant father, where in this puppeture of aesthetics and shapes you are every bone never broken but set wrong. And it will be a life without duty, where the violence of a countenance shores up the boundaries of removed self. Eight strings, each one for the teeth marks on my right hand. What is the lesson the disabled might teach those listening? That people are cruel? That there is an assumption otherwise that doesn't preclude these living, heartening moments of collaboration? Is the history of a thing too unaware of history to be safe? Fall asleep on a prayer or a Disney song where fat, easy moralism is just to the tune of God help the outcasts as an activist shoots himself in the head before your altar when gays are allowed to marry and what a waste and what a shame he was such a nice guy but nothing to look at. I married gay and all I got was a fee. All that was drawn in colour was a priest. There are wastes and shames every step of the turn, every aside of Dertal set out the corner of his mouths, en route to the cathedral, my oblate makes it clear that the black mass is about suffering. That is all one notable passage in the Garden of Gethsemane that tells the moral of a story he was right to hide. Thank you. Right, lots to think of there. Um.